Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Ray Hornet. Welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Wards and Wardens. So, we left off with our character attending university in Canterbury. And so, yeah, we should see that come to a conclusion here, and hopefully, we do well. Uh, so, we got the next event. And so, I think this is one of our instructors here. It says, Today, we are going to examine the anatomy of a falcon. An excited murmur spreads through the lecture hall as we appreciate the hooded bird standing proudly on the teacher's gloved arm. Much can be learned by studying the body of animals, as the ancients taught us. Does anyone want to help me with the, di the dissection demonstration? So we can volunteer to help. We're more likely to succeed, and uh, as a brave character, that's probably what we'd want to do here. So yeah, we'll volunteer. And unfortunately, we lost a little bit of court grandeur there. I'm guessing we got some probably from an event. And it seems our wife was not able to successfully achieve her mandate. So she caused some strife there. Uh, so the next event is yes and no. My in-depth studies in the Catholic doctrine at Canterbury have confronted me with so many new questions, not all of which seem to have clear-cut answers. Some even seem to have contradictory explanations. Is faith supposed to be completed by reason or not? Does faith only deal with the unseen or not? Can we even know what is unseen or not? Yes or no. So we can say there must be meaning in the contradiction. In the contradiction. So this is a learning challenge. Uh, Zero percent chance that we get the enlightened outcome here. Probably because our learning is so low. I mean, it's not. It's not that bad, but yeah, it's not great. Uh, so yeah, not a good chance of getting that outcome. But it seems like most of these outcomes are pretty good. It's just that last one results in, in stress. Uh, or we just say my head hurts. So yeah, we'll go with this option. There must be meaning. And we can't make sense of it. So we gain a, a ton of stress from that. And so maybe we might want to go for like a little jog here at the university. If we can, it seems that you can't do it while you're at university. It can't be in an activity. We'll probably hit the, the stress threshold. From my understanding, this is supposed to be pretty stressful. And, uh, you know, I went to university and got my degree, and it was sometimes stressful, uh, like around uh, midterms and finals, or when you got a bunch of papers due. It could be quite stressful. Uh, so this is the debate. So teaching at Canterbury takes place for the most part in oral form, and students are encouraged to exercise their rhetorical prowess and to show the progress of their learning and debates in front of their peers and teachers. Man, I am struggling with the these names that we got, the Anglo-Saxon and the Norwegian names here. That's that's a lot of ours. Uh, so these two guys here are involved in this event. This is our instructor, and this is the guy we're going to be debating on the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, so. This is a learning challenge. If we say, let me begin from the scriptures as everyone knows. So 46% chance that our position is stronger while 53% chance that we're outmatched. Either way, it increases our chances here of being successful, but you know, one of them results in stress, the one that we're most likely to fill in. But I think that's the one we're gonna go with. We can also try and uh, go with this option. I thought he wanted to go. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. We'll go with this. That's what we're here for. And since we actually won the debate, despite the lower chances of success there, and that decreased our stress, I didn't even notice that it was gonna, gonna do that. Also, we did sway our Prince Bishop. Do we wanna do it again? Uh, nah, you know what, let's just cancel. There's not a high chance of success here. We can take a look and see if there's anybody else in the council that boosting the opinion would be worth. Nah, not really. Yeah, we're good enough there, and I think everybody else's opinion is fine as well. I don't think we're going to work on swaying anybody at the moment. We're we're busy at the university. Universities and centers of higher education are always bustling hives of socialization. In these hollowed halls, the students are all peers, all apprentices along the road to knowledge, which is why it can be helpful to make friends and feel part of a community. These, at least, are my first thoughts when Gamel, which is uh, the character we just had that last event with, I think, uh, he approaches me, the smell of mead on his breath. Join me and my friends, Gerard. Prove to us the might of a king by downing more cups than anyone else, and we shall consider you one of us. Well, as a eager reveler and, and a brave character, you probably want to try this out. We wouldn't want to be challenged and not even attempt it. And uh, we might end up getting a penalty here and more stress, which would not put us that next level. Uh, but if we succeed, not a high chance, 50%. If I can just look at this, 
There we go. We'll get the university connections plus one to diplomacy and personal scheme power. So yeah, we'll, we'll try. And they liked us. Of course they did. Uh, but we lost the skilled tactician trait. Why was that? Oh, because we achieved our education. We finished it. So apparently we were successful enough to get the education trait improved. I'm not sure why I was confused there. Obviously it was us improving our education here since that's what we're here to do. Uh, but yeah, this increased our martial and also we'll now be able to get through our perk tree faster. And apparently did well enough to get a couple perks too because we have two of them here. So this is the conclusion of our university visit. This has been such an amazing experience. When I left, I couldn't even imagine the number of wise men that study at Canterbury, the depth of their thinking, and the breadth of their research. Just being part of the same environment has made me a much better person, and with my new gain knowledge, I can make my, my way home very satisfied. So knowledge is power. Uh, also, a lot of gold was invested in buying rare and precious books. All right, so we did get the illustrious book here, Franconian, about warfare. And so that increased our prestige, our control territory defender advantage, and our monthly martial lifestyle experience. So yeah, pretty useful, guys. Um, so we're going to want to put that in place. And yeah, we're going to have to head back home. But first, let's go and get the two perks we got. Loyalty and respect, increased spouse opinion, and we get more skills from the spouse counselor task. And then we also got the peace acceptance, so it'll be easier to finish up wars here. Uh, so yeah, our spouse is now going to be giving us more bonuses, as we've seen with our last character here. And so yeah, we're going to get a lot more uh, from her. And so that's nice. We're getting the four diplomacy, two martial, two stewardship, an intrigue, and a learning point. All right, so our marshal's currently at 19, stewardship's at 10, and diplomacy's at 14. So we're very diplomatic in addition to our, our martial focus here. So let's go ahead and put that artifact in place so we get the, the bonuses from it. So yeah, we'll just set it over there. And we should be making our way through these perks much faster with that book and the improved education. Now we're on our way back home and we have some language barrier events here. And apparently we successfully completed it. So we're just going to go with the personally chivalrous. We got that event before. I think it was our father, though. All right, and we are finally back home after that long visit to the university. All right, so I suppose the next thing we're going to want to work on... Uh, we didn't actually appoint this guy yet. He's okay. He could be better. And uh, apparently he won't have the same secondary... Although it looks like our besieger secondary has changed anyways over to Thug. Okay. So that's unfortunate. Because yeah, we're not getting those other bonuses that we were anymore. And we do have a successor for the first among advisors. If you guys want to keep that name as is. If you don't and you have other name suggestions, feel free to post those down in the comments. We're going to ask this count here. If he'll teach our son, you know, he has that chaste and the zealous traits here and uh, a very good learning as well. So he'll accept that. So just trying to get our son a good education here. So unfortunately something happened to our former wet nurse. I don't know what. She's not a wet nurse anymore. And uh, we're going to go in and appoint Candida, which remember she was married to our father. And so she's going to be the wet nurse here. Why not? Give her a job in court. Something to do. Take care of all the children. She's got a lot of children of her own in our court. And is this the first trait for our son? It looks like it is. He is still severely injured. This is, of course, our, our eldest son as well, guys. And uh, the callous trait is the first one that he's gotten here. Couldn't still instead make him just or greedy. I uh, remember we have him going down the intrigue, so it makes a lot of sense to let him just keep the callus. Uh, and of course, this is if he's able to recover from this. Uh, it looks like Otto already has recovered from his injury. It's just our eldest. Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and let him keep the callus trait. And so that'll be an interesting uh, character to play as, if in fact we do play as him. 
And it looks like uh, there's now high crown authority here in the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, so yeah, we got the gallant trait. All right, excellent. So remember that gives us that. We'll actually take a look at inside of our character screen here. Um, so that gallant trait gives us the increased martial. We're at 22 now. Uh, also increased prowess, 26 here. Only 32 years old, so it's going to be a while before we start to see that decrease. Uh, increased monthly prestige, attraction opinion, and accolade glory gain. So very nice, and he is the perfect Athorian knight, isn't he? Uh, there's a hunt that we've been invited to. This is Count Conrad. Uh, do we want to attend? Looks like we might not be able to. It's not popping up here. Yeah, I think it's already ongoing, and we just can't uh, we can't reach it. Uh, but we need to work off some stress here, guys. So let's uh, work out. Look at that sweaty stench. And we got that uh, friendly competition event again. This is what our marshal and acclaimed knight. Um, so we can say watching him struggle will be motivating. And I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of get friendlier with him. He might become athletic as well. Should make him a better knight. And Duke Otto has been excommunicated by the Pope. All right, so I guess we'll want to go ahead and do a war here soon. Let's start preparing our forces for that. I wanted to build up the men-in-arms a bit. We can actually get an additional men-in-arms. I think it makes sense to instead increase the size of our current men-in-arms first. So let's go ahead and step these up a bit uh, with what money we have here. And then maybe get these guys built up a little bit too. They're a little bit cheaper. So yeah, we'll build up the, the army a little bit first. That'll take some time. And then, yeah, we'll do a war. We don't really need more troops for these wars. We'll likely do, because I think uh, they're all going to be smaller conflicts. Although I'm not entirely sure what's going to be uh, open to us. Let's take a look at what wars we can declare. Uh, so France, that would be a more difficult one. So you would want to build up your troops uh, before you do it. Currently have up to 4,500 is what we'll get. Uh, there's also these other two wars here. We've seen this one. That's probably the one we're going to do. This one here is just about another character's claims. Yeah, if we want to do like a quick, easy one, then this would be the best option. It would cost us piety, of course, since we're attacking a prince bishop who's sick. So, uh, taking advantage of his sickness here. So I believe these are both for the same province. This one here, just a matter of prestige, piety cost. So it's 190 for that one. Well, it's just the 100 piety, so obviously this is the best route uh, to go. Uh, but because of the realm walls, we can't actually declare war. That's right. Yep, we'd have to get a hook. So unfortunately, we can't expand our territory within the realm. The only choice is to attack France. Uh, what is the war that we can do with France? Do we really want to increase his lands? Not really. Although he did pay homage to, to us, and we really don't have any reason to hate this guy besides hating his father. He's a powerful vassal. I was thinking we'd just let him rebel and then take some of his titles. He's got a lot of titles. He's got two duchies. So, I mean, probably just going to allow him to rebel or whatever. And so I don't think it would make sense to uh, expand his territory. You do have this count here who has claims. In fact, we can get an entire duchy for him. That makes a lot of sense though. He's going to be incredibly powerful because he already owns these two counties here. And then you also give him this territory. Uh, but it would free him from Duke Gottfried because he'd be his own duke. And so it actually makes Gottfried weaker. So it makes sense to do that. I, I suppose that's what we'll do guys. We declare war for this. Uh, but of course this is a war with France who has uh, allies. Allied with uh, Normandy. But Normandy's not free, is it? No, it's not free anymore. Yeah, he also is allied with Toulouse. So all vassals of his. So declaring war against him, we would have higher numbers with our one ally here, which he has succeeded to his duchy. And so we can pull him in. And so yeah, we would have more troops. I think it makes sense to at least let this finish building up. And, uh... Maybe we increase the men in arms a little bit more. Uh, there's two events here. They're both feasts that we can go to. So let's just take a look. So this one, that's five months away. This one's only three months away. 
going to a feast and reducing some of our stress before this conflict, I think would be wise. And so yeah, let's go ahead and do this. That's three months. So we'll go ahead and join it. And our goal will probably be recreation to reduce our stress here. And, you know, we have a, a regent we can trust as well. Our, our wife is, is loyal. And we just take a look here. Yeah, he's garbage. We'll just get the, the money there. Although our wife has not been doing good with the mandate, she actually did good this time. Though she did swing the scales of power in her favor, and she caused that strife. Uh, we did get the increased levy size in that one county, and so that's, you know, helpful for, for conflict. Got like another hundred dudes or so available to us. And also we got another person that can, another inspired person that we can pay for. And do we want to though? He's very competent. We probably should have paid the, the, the master who wanted to go to Southern Europe if we we're going to do that route. It's not as good as the other inspiration. Sometimes you get some good objects, but overall I notice it's not as good as the other ones. So we have arrived at the feast and just a typical event here. Let me see, where are we at on stress? 44? Well, I feel like, you know, this is just where we want to be. Just happy with life right now. Uh, also, somebody's in awe of us, recognizing our true intellect. So we got a little bit of extra prestige there. And we have a dilemma here with this count. <laughs> we say I could not care less. I don't think so. I think we'd like to talk about this. We just got back from the university. And thus, we have made a new friend. Of course, he's an older man, so probably causes stress later when he when he dies. And we've already got an opportunity to help our friend out, because apparently he's a shy character. And so we can distract these converging guests for him, which we'll do. we got a weak hook on him, which we probably wouldn't use. And apparently the mayor here is his main guest. Alright, so we'll depart, get a bit of experience here. And yeah, we completely lost all of our stress. We lost a lot more stress than we needed to lose. And an event about Saxon women. I don't know if you've seen this one before, but we're going to read it. I've seen the world and beheld its many wonders in my travels, but never have I beheld such beauties as the one I've seen in Hohenstein. Truly, Saxon women are cut above the rest. One particular fascinating specimen has taken my eyes as of late, a peasant woman by the name of Katharina. A pretty little spring blossom. She's far too pleasing to my eye to spend her days slaving away in Hohenstein. Um, so... I don't think this fits with our character all that much. He's very loyal to his wife. Yeah, I don't think it really fits. So she's not going to become our lover. We're going to say, I can't give my love so freely. It's just not, uh, we're not our father. I'm sure our father would have loved such an opportunity. And this character converted from French to Franconian. All right, so... I think we're going to go ahead and increase our troop numbers by a little bit more. So let's go ahead and get the men in arms built up just a little bit more. Uh, so maybe try and get them all up to like level 5 here. And then just build a war chest and we're ready to go. Uh, obviously we don't have the, the siege engine up to level 5, but that's not really necessary. Yeah, we'll just build up a war chest here. Maybe get up out of the winter. And then we'll go ahead and declare war uh, on France, of all countries. Of course, we could try and get another ally, uh, you know, for our uh, marriage of our, our children. I'm shocked that our son is still severely injured. Very unfortunate. Since our other son did recover here. No traits yet for these two sons. Uh, also, our daughter has her education trait. Uh, she is rowdy. All right, well, let's go ahead and go with... Another entry character, perhaps? We have a couple marshal. And, oh, <laughs> our youngest daughter is hideous. How sad. All right, well, she doesn't have her uh, childhood trait just yet. We do need to find someone to educate Princess Hedwig. Uh, so what is our wife? She's a uh, diplomacy, I see. So let's just see if there's anybody within our courts that would be a good option. I mean, why not? Yeah, the court position 
not only has that high learning, which is pretty important, regardless of the the education route you're going, but he's got great intrigue. So it makes perfect sense. And we'll also boost the opinion with the doctor, giving him that uh, responsibility. Let me just see if there's anybody new here. No, it's just the same old one that was there before. All right, so just building up the war chest a little bit to pay for this conflict. And it looks like Ida did get her education, and it is pensive. You know what? I'm going to have her do, just in case we can't have one of our, you know, our son, uh, Otto, go to the church. Then we'll have her. I'd like to have somebody go. Maybe you send them both. I don't know. We'll probably do, we'll want to do some marriages, though, of course. But just because you do the, the learning education doesn't mean you have to send them to the church. So we got the next character trait for our heir. So we can have him re remain brave like our current character or have him be stubborn or wrathful. I feel like wrathful. Callous and wrathful. This is going to be a great character. So yeah, we're going to have him, him change his trait here. This is going to be an interesting uh, character to play as if we do in fact get to play as him because he's still uh, severely injured. So I don't really know how well that's going to work out if uh, he can't recover from this. And we can't do any wars within the HRE. Where are we at our troop numbers? We're almost there. Close enough. It's just levies that we're building up. And uh, I want to make sure we take advantage of this opportunity while we can to get all this territory for the Holy Roman Empire and for our own our own kingdom. Uh, this is going to be very expensive prestige-wise. Luckily, we do have the prestige for this. Uh, and I was also going to take a look and see if there was any other alliances we want to do. So we'll do that real quick. Just see if there's any good marriages. We don't have to arrange a marriage for our son right now. He's, you know, not that old. Uh, but yeah, if there's a good marriage, then uh, it makes sense to to do it. And we want this to be based on alliance power. Well, since the emperor has a daughter that we can arrange a marriage for, and that makes a lot of sense, honestly. That we would do a, an alliance with them. Yeah, it just makes so much sense. So I think we're going to go ahead and do this this marriage here for our eldest. Remember, uh, I prefer doing marriages that, that uh, make sense in these roleplay series uh, for either alliances or just because it's one that your, your character would try and do. You'd want to marry into the imperial family rather than marrying for traits and stuff like that. We'll only do that if we don't have any other uh, good options or just don't need a in the lights. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I like this one. So he'll accept that, of course. Uh, we'll send that off. I don't know if we'll actually be able to call him into this war, though. I mean, you'd think so. But yeah, maybe not. Yeah, it looks like that's not an option. Uh, we do have an alliance with him, right? So let me just take a look here. Yeah, we have an alliance with him, but can't actually pull him into that conflict. That's interesting, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, what governs, whether you can pull him in, maybe because he's your liege. What we should be doing, rather than just looking at random characters, is if we just want an ally, and maybe look at the options available to us here. And the actual countries that you might want an alliance with. They have a lot of alliances here. I don't know if I really want to get pulled into England's conflicts, though. Could look within the HRE. I want somebody who's kind of close to your the borders with uh, France here. They might break away, so I don't really want to do that. But maybe this family, if they have any good marriages available. And yeah, maybe our daughter to... Let me just take a look. I think our, our daughter is about his age, somewhere around there. Hedwig. Yeah, Hedwig is five. So if he doesn't have marriage, he does not. He does go with the, the, one of the older ones, though. Yeah, I mean, you could go with uh, an older one that might have a chance of inheriting. I mean, obviously he's already married and has his own children, so probably not. Uh, with everybody having primogeniture, marrying uh, lower-end sons is less likely to result in your family you know, having some relationship with a ruler. And so probably should just do it with the the children that are closest to their age and would be a good fit. So yeah, probably just with this kid here, he's around the same age and we'll uh, arrange a marriage with Lombardi. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. 
and apparently they're related to a degree. I mean, everybody's related to some degree. This is our sister-in-law here. Our brother-in-law. So yeah, there's some kind of marriage there. I think it'll be fine. So yeah, let's go and send that off. That'll get us another alliance here. All right, excellent. So let me just take a look and see how the situation appears now. Because yeah, we can't pull in the Emperor, but we can pull in the Duke of Lombardy. Just to make the war go faster and smoother. So yeah, let's go and declare war now. Because there's always a chance when you're doing a war for another character that that character dies and then it just all your efforts uh, are wasted. And so you want these type of wars to go as quickly as possible, honestly. Um, so let's go ahead and call in both of our allies. If we have the prestige, we'll probably want to call in him first. We actually do have the prestige for both of them, though. Just barely. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and raise up our own troops. That's a war with France, and he'll pull in his own allies, likely. Uh, and we'll want to go after the territory we have here, I suppose. So let's go ahead and have our troops up this way. I don't know that we have enough to split them. Let's just slow this down a little bit here. Of course, our allies are going to join the conflict. But yeah, I don't know that we have enough that... It warrants splitting, maybe. It looks like this uh, supply limit in this area is pretty low. So what we could do is go ahead and split them into a sieging army and a, a fighting army. Okay, so we'll have somebody else lead the sieging army with just some levies here. As far as how many we want to keep in our own army, let me just see what the the lowest number is in this area. Maybe like 3,500. Yeah, I suppose we'll keep 3,500 in our own army. And then, like so. Maybe take a few more outs. I know we're doing really, really low numbers at this point, but that's all right. That looks pretty good. And so this 1,300 would be doing the sieges. I don't know if that'll be enough though. Uh, we'll have to see. But we do have our allies as well. To help out with sieges. And let me just see if we have anybody who's got a good siege trait. No, just that gas there. Okay. So in this case it should be somebody we don't want that like we don't care if they if they die. See so yeah, how you don't want to put somebody at risk here that you care about. Well, this is our cousin. Uh, he's uh <laughs> he'll handle it fine, I'm sure. All right, so as far as uh, which ones we need to, to go after, I think just any of them matters. Uh, you might have to take all of them in order to get the objective for the Duchy of Flanders. And so yeah, we'll just start with uh, this location here. Or maybe go from, let me see here. Maybe go from east to west. And then we'll have this army sit, like right here. So he raised his troops up over here. So we'll see if he comes and attacks us. Our wife is pregnant again. All right, excellent. So yeah, we'll see if he moves to attack us or if he just goes after our territory. We have our allies coming. It would be a good time for him to move against us. He won't get any uh, train bonuses here. The siege would take seven months. By the way, we can beat him uh, by ourselves, I think, but we would have to bring that sieging army over here. If he attacks from across here, he's going to get the river penalty. So I hope he does. No, he went into our territory. Okay, so not surprising. We'll move to go after him as our allies get closer here. And apparently, we just inherited that barony. Uh, that we had given to that knight. He built the, the castle there. And I guess he never got married. And so yeah, we just got the barony. Okay. So we'll keep it as long as we, you know, don't have anything else to get. But if we get another county, then that'd be the first thing we would grant out to somebody. Let me see if there's anything we need to be aware of over here. Not seeing anything. 
this new titles that we could create. All right, so he decided to siege there. He's got more troops coming over this way. Our allies are pretty close, but not quite here yet. We would win the battle against those 2,600. And our allies should be arriving soon. Let me just see who uh, gets here first. Like, do we leave? Or, or does he leave first, or do we get here first? Because we don't want to fight these 5,000 alone for too long. Looks like they'll, they'll leave in four days. We'll get their nades. They'll come back, most likely. Or maybe not, because that's going to be a defeat now. Let's see what happens, because our allies are arriving. And yeah, it's hard to say. If they'll... Yep, they are coming. Okay, so they're going to just throw themselves into this clear defeat. Not wise on their part. They should have took off. Went somewhere else. We had no chance of winning that once our allies got there. Uh, so yeah, we got a victory. Barely lost any troops here. Let's just take a look and see how our knights did. Uh, the Count Adrian, he's known as the Impeller. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so, he did the best. Let's take a look at all the all the knights we have. Alright, uh, we'll also take a look at the events. So, our knight was wounded. Oh, interesting, by Hugh Capet. Very interesting. Alright, so, we're doing this siege the whole time while we're fighting these battles. We should have been chasing him down. Oh, they probably go deep into his territory, so maybe start up another siege, I think. That's somewhat close to this location, though. You would say casualties there. Maybe just go here, then. Also, got another Marshall perk. Uh, so, we're going to go down the uh, strategist line here. Would have been nice to have that before we declared this war. Could have saved some, some prestige here. But yeah, we have this line completed. I don't know that we'll go down this line. I don't know if it makes a lot of sense for our character. Probably not. We'll probably just go down this, and then maybe we'll start working on diplomacy, even though it's not like the most efficient thing to do. And I think we should be able to, considering our age and uh, how quickly we'll be going through our education tax. Well, there's another victory right there. Excellent. And this one's going to take 15 months here. Jeez. Alright, so it'll take a while, but this one here will be done in less than a month. And then we'll go after this location. And maybe the French will just focus on fighting this army here, or just sitting around, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so our allies are winning all the battles for us here, while we do the sieges. Capture prisoners. So we'll take out this location next, and this character here just joined our court. He'll probably become a knight. I guess we'll see. Maybe not. We might have such a good group of knights, we don't need them. I don't know. Alright, so this siege will only take five months. And we're already at 62%. So it shouldn't take much longer to get this victory here, guys. Uh, we could go ahead and ransom. We might just do that after the war's over, though. No, the people we're capturing are uh, key prisoners here, as you guys can see. We've already got the max from battles. So battles are irrelevant at this point. Uh, of course, as long as you win them. And we have another daughter. Okay. So she doesn't have any inherited traits here. And so now we need a name. What was her mother's name? Oh, that's what it's already named. Uh, so, Rishenza? Yeah, why not? So we named our after our mother, her mother, and uh, our wife. So all family names. Nothing, Nothing unique here. Alright, so we have three sieges currently going. We'll see if that's enough to win the war. So yeah, here's a metalsmith. He's competent. Do we want to pay him? I kind of feel like we should for this brooch here. Yeah, why not? He's not great. He'll probably ask for more money, but... but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hire him. This, this war isn't going to take much longer, and then money won't be an issue anymore. Uh, so, we can dedicate this to somebody, and I think it makes the most sense to get it, dedicate it to our wife. Yeah, our beloved, Ida, because she's our soulmate. Alright, so the French are back, 
Not much troops left. They're down to 1,600 currently. They're just going to invade into our territory. And he did finish that siege up already. Though didn't help much in the war score department. We're only at 66%. Uh, so this one got us up to 78%. Let's go ahead and go after the next location here. And yeah, I don't even think... I don't even know that it's worth having this army do them. It just takes far too long. Or at least that location took far too long. Because yeah, this was a year, a year and three months to get that siege done. Uh, this one here is going to be eight months. Another battle won there. Again, not going to help with the war score at all. Uh, but our alliance has expired already because he died. Uh, his son has joined the conflict. So let me just see if uh, we can er, negotiate this alliance. He will, because you know we are still married to his. Uh, we still have the marriage alliance with his brother. So we'll go ahead and arrange that. Oh damn! <laughs> Didn't want to pull them off. I'm trying to finish this siege, been working on it forever. Don't want to cancel it. And uh, one of our prisoners died. Uh, he was an old man. Not surprising. He did accept that alliance, so we're back to being allied with the Duke of Lombardy, and he's a much younger man. So that alliance will last much, much longer. We're a young man as well, so you look at the alliance that we have over here. He's in his 40s. So we have two good uh, allies that should last for at least another decade or so. So don't really have to worry about alliances at this point. And of course, he requested more funds. We're so surprised with this. But we want a higher quality, so we will invest in that. Let's see if we can't make a, a better brooch. And our allies took to the sea. Might be a good thing, because it looks like... God, I'm not I'm not abandoning this. <laughs> I'll let my army get destroyed. Yeah, because he needs to come help, because I waited way too long to finish this, this up to just leave it. So we should be done, maybe in time to engage in this battle here. And our, our uh, prisoners are all really old, so they're, they're all dying. So I could have ransomed some of those and got some money. So we got a betrothal offer from the King of Scotland, known as the Big Headed. And so which grandson is this? This is the, the one down the main line, so will eventually be the King of Scotland. And this is for our half-sister, Candida, who's, uh, remember, uh, a beautiful young lady. And so, yeah, why not? Let's accept that. They don't often get uh, marriage offers from the AI. Let's go ahead and move to protect our siege army here. I don't know if we're going to get there in time. Yeah, siege army might be defeated. Unfortunately. Yeah, they did get defeated. Oh, maybe not. Army got there just in time. Still probably took some casualties here, though. I should should move the the army a little bit quicker there. All right, so we captured more troops here, but still got to finish up these sieges in order to win the war. And yeah, they only have 881 now, so are we doing all right on supply limit? Just under it for now. So just need to finish these sieges up. I think I don't know if this will be enough. This one here, it'll be close. We're probably gonna need to get that uh, this one here done as well. Let me take a look at this battle. But yeah, we did lose more troops because he was just fighting those, those levies. I guess we'll take a look at how our knights did over here. Oh, we did kill one of his knights. Yeah, we didn't do much there. They got there kind of late. Oh, killed a couple of his knights, including the Duke of Toulouse, a young man. So now it's, uh, well, who took over that title, I wonder? Let's take a look here. So this is the new Duke of Toulouse. This is Uncle. See so yeah, how we killed a, a Duke in this conflict. It's impactful. Oh yeah, remember we only needed to get to the 90%. I didn't think about that fact because we got that one perk. So we're not even going to let that complete. Let's just end the war, guys. There's no reason to, to keep it going any longer. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and enforce our demands. We will not demand a hostage, even though we can't demand a hostage. It's not even an option anyways. Uh, but yeah, let's go enforce our demands. And end this conflict. There we go. King of France has been defeated and lost a bunch of territory there. And also, we got a favor 
on the Duke here, the new Duke. So we have a favor, and uh, this also freed him from Gottfried. So Gottfried just lost a big chunk of his territory there, two big old counties. And so he's not as powerful. Oop, I didn't realize this was still playing here. We got ransom offers. Um, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna look at the prison ourselves. If I hit the right hockey here. And just make sure that there's nobody here that we might want to recruit instead. No. Well, generally, the only thing you want to recruit for is, is knights. And uh, none of these guys are impressive in any regard. So yeah, we can go ahead and accept these ransom offers. There we go. Beautiful. It looks like somebody didn't get ransoms. <laughs> so we still got our prisoner here. This is a count. So yeah, let's get us some uh, some money, some nice money. Pay for the conflict. And historically, that was uh, the main way that you uh, earn money from conflicts is by capturing noble prisoners uh, and uh, ransoming them off. And that's also why you generally preferred to to capture nobles rather than kill them in battles. Though nobles still did die. I mean, it was a dangerous. Uh, Dangerous employment, being a soldier, a knight. All right, so we got this money here. We took over all this territory, got a little bit of conflict into the campaign. And uh, the next thing we'll probably do is maybe invest further in our own territory here. Go ahead and increase this. It's the only thing we can really afford. So yeah, we're going to get that. And we don't have enough stress to to bother working it off right now. He did accept that ransom. All right, excellent. All right, so let's go and turn that speed back up. And the inspiration has been finished as well. So it was a masterwork trinket. So we'll go ahead and wear it. We could also give it to our wife, I suppose, uh, if we wanted to, because, you know, we did put her name on it. But yeah, I think, I think we'll wear it. So that'll increase our prestige gain and romance scheme power. And you see that dedication on there as well. Uh, how much time do we have for this expires? We got six years still. I'll try and peek back in there. We want to keep getting the prestige bonus while we can. And then eventually we'll, we'll break it down for the money. Could also repair it. I'll have to take a look, see if it's worth it or not. Uh, so the Count Conrad, who's known as the Bloody of Luxembourg, is paying homage to us. Right, excellent, some more renown and more money. They are making sure to bring that money with us, or with them. And apparently we don't have enough knights here. That should fix itself. And we got the next level of grandeur and the next level of fame. All right, excellent. Uh, so a king for a bard. I am in a tent in an encampment bordering the kingdom of Hungary. Why the hell are we over there? Uh, tasked with gauging the tensions between our realms. Suddenly, a man enters the tent, demanding to see the new commander. Instinctively, I step forward. I'm guessing this is because of our role here in our Lesia's council as the steward. That's the only thing I can think of why we were over there. So, so you're the new commander. Very well. Pick a challenge. The loser pays for the other camp strengths tonight. I suppose we could be leading his troops as well. It says we're still located in Nazi, though, so yeah, I think this is just an event, a random event here. Uh... But he uh, is the commander of the foreign encampment, oblivious to the fact that I'm Gerard and not a mere military leader. So you can say, you fool, I am King Gerard of Lotharingia. And he'll lose opinion with us, we'll gain prestige and dread and martial life's no experience points. Uh, bring forth thou nastiest poem about each other's lieges. Yeah, I don't think we'd do that one. Uh, let's settle this with a friendly match in guard, or on guard. Um, this is a single combat. Yeah, we might might do that one. Or why wait into the tavern? Let us complete by or compete by drinking ale. I kind of feel like this is the one that would fit most. Yeah, we're not really the, the type of character here to be like, you know, declaring this as if we were like a, a very arrogant character. Uh, yeah, let's go with this. We haven't had any single combat in the Let's Play yet either. So we stalk around each other, weighing our option. He has a fearsome sword while I grip my own sword tightly. The deadly weapon feels cool and weighty in my grasp. This fight may only be till first blood, but that doesn't ease my nerves. 
He's got a 13 prowess against our 25 prowess, which is a little bit lower than what we had before. I think we lost one of the modifiers that we had. So uh, as far as which option we're going to go with, yeah, I think this makes most sense. High risk of success. Yeah, we'll go with that option. So we leap into action, launching a flurry of clicks, uh, slashes, driving myself hard against his guard, wearing him down with each expertly timed strike. He shifts into a defensive stance, his sword forming a damn near impenetrable wall of perfect parries between me and him. My form is good with only small errors, and Slavomar's uh, stance is formidable. My opponent is reeling from me, victory so close that I can practically taste it. So, let's go with... Let's go with this option. I'll show you how I have the sword. So my sword flows around him like water, each strike chaining fluidly into the next, a series of perfectly timed attacks. Unexpectedly, Slavomir manages to swing a vicious kick from my shin, momentarily hobbling me. My former is good with only small errors, and his stance is formidable. I cannot be more than one well-placed uh, strike away from victory. So we can say, let's how you do, see how you do without your sword and attempt to disarm him. Or yeah, the talking smack, or I just kind of talk smack too. We'll, we'll go with this one, trying to disarm. So one colossal, powerful cleave from my sword is almost enough to wrench his sword away from him, but he manages to recover. Unexpectedly, he manages to, well, we already did that one, so we should have expected it. Alright, so basically nothing happened here, we just kind of, uh countered each other. Okay, let's go with, uh, we'll go with this one. And we did defeat him, gaining that prestige and the experience points. Confidence leads confidence, as they say, and my strikes prove that. Slavomir tries a couple of perfunctory quick slashes, but nothing I can't easily dodge away from. Gambling on his timidus, I lunge forward with a powerful cleave that knocks him totally off balance. Not stopping to breathe, I boot him hard in the knee, and he falls with a heavy thud. This gives me ample time to position myself for a gruesome kill. He yields within seconds. So we are victorious. So we got some experience points uh, Experience points with the Hassel Looter trait there. Moving towards getting that first point in the foot. We have 17 experience currently, so I need about 13 more there. All right. So yeah, we got ourselves a, a nice victory there. All right, so we'll try and progress a little bit more before we end the episode. We also finished up the construction of that small hill fort. And we got the next perk here, which we have three choices. So which branch we want to go down first. Uh, so this one here gives you the bonuses for the cab. You also get trade experience gain for the horse, part of the half saluter trait. And then you'll get the envelopment. Okay. Uh, organized march. That's nice for the the army speed and the travel speed. Yeah, you get the screen bonuses as well. And then the hit and run. Hmm. I feel like we should go over this one because the the siege weapon effectiveness is nice. Of course, we'll get all of them, but you know it's many years in between getting them. Uh, also, there's a hunt here, but it doesn't look like we can make it in time. And is this the next trait? Oh, it's the trait for Magnus, actually. Uh, so Fickle is the first one that he got here. Remember, we're trying to make him into a good knight. This could go with content or trusting. None of these are going to help him when it comes to, you know, prowess or, or martial. Maybe we'll just make him content. And just take that stress. And so now that we have a bit of stress, we can go ahead and take the decision to work it off. And heavier is more. So this is not enough, I think to myself, as I put down the training sword. I've been practicing nonstop, but I'm not getting tired. I need a tougher challenge. Yes, something bigger, or perhaps heavier. Something sure to tire me out. So we'll, we can commission an extra heavy training sword Cost 140, and we'll get this good exercise modifier, but just for a year. Doesn't help you that much, honestly. Probably not worth the extra cost there. We instead left our, our young daughter. I don't know how much that would help. She's only one year old. I mean, <laughs> she doesn't weigh much. Doesn't seem like it's going to help that much. 
Uh, or we could say there's no need for improvement at this time. But you don't lose as much stress if you do that. There's a chance that uh, with this option that we wound ourselves or her. It's just kind of senseless, honestly. So it's really just do you want to pay the extra money to lose the extra stress? We'll just go with this. And uh, we've got a spouse event as well. And this is for boosting one of our vassals here. So we can boost the marshal, or I guess one of our council members. So we can boost him, his marshal is learning, or we can boost the, the bishop. And this is for a long time as well. Or we can just tell our wife, stay with me instead. Uh, just take a look at their current stats. He's actually pretty good. He's 63 though, so he'll likely die soon. So it makes the most sense to probably boost the, the marshal. And, uh, you know, we're also a marshal minded character, so probably what we'd want to do there. Alright guys, so we increased the size of our realm by quite a bit by getting that duke. That worked out very well for us. Though, we now have this very powerful vassal. It probably makes sense to give him a position on our council, something I have not yet done. Uh, but we'd have to replace this, this count here. Hmm. Because neither of these two characters, and, and they're our best on the council, I, I guess he's pretty good too, let's be honest. Yeah, I guess you'd have to replace him. Makes the most sense. And that's also this character's best skill. So I know it's going to irritate him. Uh, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to put this steward in place here. So we do have several powerful vassals, a couple here, that do not have positions currently. And they're both good at diplomacy. And then this is Duke Godfrey. We don't even want to, to give him a position anyways. He would be better than uh, Adrian, but we're not going to change that up here. Uh, he absolutely loves us, of course, because we press his claim. And so we're getting that plus 50 there. And so overall, our council likes us quite a bit. And he's a little bit better, too, so how about improve the, uh, the, de the development quicker here. We're moving from 13 to 14 currently. Uh, so I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.